rats or you're thinking of getting rats in the future, it is highly likely that at some point you are going to end up with old or elderly rats and their care can differ slightly from when you first got them, so I thought today I would talk about that and talk about how to help them in their old age. So I have already tried to film this video three times before and I just completely rambled and got too tired halfway through so I'm going to try to keep this as concise as possible and split it into different care sections but as rats get older they do require slightly different care and amendments to their care and this can be both time consuming and costly. So right now I have two rats that can be considered elderly. Whisper is just over two years old and right now there's not too many things I'm doing. He's not on any medications and right now, touch word, he seems okay but Crumble on the other hand, he is two and a half years old and he is on a bunch of medications. There's a bunch of different things I have to do for him and he's costing me about £150 every six weeks or so just to keep him going. So just to give you an idea of how different rats can be as they age and how much it can cost. So let's start by talking about health issues in older rats. Of course rats are so prone to many different health issues, but these can be a lot more common as they age. Things like respiratory infections, tumours, these can all be a lot more common as they get older, but of course their bodies are slowing down, the organs are starting to shut down, and the two main things I look for in older rats is heart and kidney issues. So I just thought I'd read you some of the most common signs and symptoms of heart failure and also kidney failure in rats. For this I'm using a really good resource, I use this all the time when it comes to health issues, to check symptoms and treatment options, and this is called ratguide.com, I'll link this in the description, it's such a good resource if you want to check out a health issue, and I use it all the time, so we'll start with heart failure in rats, some of the earlier signs of this is they get tired more quickly, they may be a lot more inactive, or sleeping more than usual. You may also see weakness of the hind limbs, a dry cough, laboured breathing or propping their head up to breathe easier. Some rats will literally hang out their hammocks and kind of hang their head over the side of the hammocks just to try to breathe a bit easier. Also if you have an older rat that you suspect has a respiratory infection or they're showing signs of having one but the treatment is not really working, get their heart checked because sometimes heart failure in rats can present itself in a very similar way. You may also notice they have an enlarged abdomen or swelling in their limbs and feet due to fluid retention and also cool pale extremities so their ears, feet, tail, these might be more cold than usual due to poor circulation and a later sign of this is these extremities so their toes, their tail, even their balls might have a slight blue tinge to them due to poor oxygenation. You may also see changes in their behaviour, things like being a lot more anxious when you try to handle them or not being as willing as they usually are to be handled and interacted with. These are all signs your rats might be uncomfortable and possibly in pain. So moving on to kidney issues or kidney failure in rats, some of the early signs of this are gradual weight loss, even when they seem to be eating the same, they may be lethargic, drinking more, they may have changes in their appetite. And one of the biggest signs of kidney failure in rats is hind limb weakness. This can be quite gradual, but they may be dragging or scuffing their back legs, or they may completely lose all function in their back legs, and that can be a sign of kidney failure. Some of the later stages of kidney failure in rats are things like loss of appetite, constipation, anemia, a buildup of fluid in the abdomen, and sometimes even seizures. If you see any of these signs or symptoms in your ageing rats, take them to a vet, take a urine sample, get their heart checked. I just use these urine test strips, they are meant for humans but you can get these off of eBay or Amazon. Some of the things won't apply but if you look directly at the protein levels and if they are even slightly elevated, take your rats to a vet, get them checked out and if you do catch this early, whether it's heart failure or kidney failure or a combination of both, you can start medications that will give them a bit of extra time. It's not going to completely cure them because they are getting old, they are aging, but you can give them a bit of extra time if you catch these signs and symptoms early. So anything you see, any of the previous things I've just mentioned, take them to a vet because it can give you a lot of extra time with them. One thing that I swear by is this, this is called Apacatine and it helps to support kidney function in dogs but also rats. And I start giving mine this at about 18 months old onwards 
and I have no proof to back up this claim but honestly I feel like giving Crumble this every single day religiously has helped him get to two and a half years old so worst case it doesn't do anything and it's pointless, best case it helps to extend their life by supporting their kidneys so I do recommend starting this with your rats when they get about 18 months old onwards just because. The next age-related health issue, particularly in male rats, that I was not aware of when I got rats, and I definitely did not sign up for, and that is penis plugs. So most younger rats should take care of this by themselves unless they're lazy, or they have poor hygiene, but obviously as rats start to get older, and their mobility isn't as good, sometimes they can't always reach and get rid of that buildup. And if the rat's not doing it and you're not doing it, this can be incredibly painful, it can prevent them from peeing properly, and it can lead to infections. So you do kind of have to check for these on a regular basis, and I will pick probably an unwilling volunteer to show you how to check for these. Okay, so Pudding is our less than willing volunteer, and he's been in his box of dirt all day, so his tail is filthy, but all you want to do with your rats, and they're probably not gonna like this, but it is really important to check, is to pick them up, semi flip them over like this, and I will zoom in. I know, buddy, I know. So you might need to get someone to help you do this if they're a bit wriggly, but once you've got them on their back, you want to kind of obviously locate the area, and then with two fingers, press very firmly but gently either side until it pops out, and you should be checking for obviously any buildup, anything in there. If there is anything, you just want to kind of get it out and wipe it away. I know, I'm sorry. But yeah, that's basically how you check, just very firmly press down until it pops out and then I'll put a picture on screen of what you're looking for. If you see that, clean it away and check them on a regular basis because it obviously means they're not really doing it themselves. Good boy, thank you. Should we get you a treat? Elderly rats might also start to struggle with cleaning themselves and keeping themselves clean. If they're not doing it and the other rats are not grooming them and it starts to slip, don't go putting them into a bath and trying to bathe them and submerge them in water. The stress of this can worsen any pre-existing health issues and if they have a bad heart, for example, it can literally kill them. So don't do that, don't stress them out. Just use things like non-scented baby wipes or if their tail in particular is dirty, you can use a really soft baby toothbrush but don't stress them out by trying to bathe them. That can make things way worse. But whatever age-related health issue your rats have, whether it's a very large tumour or they can't use their back legs because of kidney failure, you have to think about their quality of life because as much as you love them and you want them to stick around as long as possible, if you've got a two-year-old, two-and-a-half-year-old, sometimes even three-year-old rat, they can really struggle on through a lot of pain and a lot of discomfort. Rats are really good at holding on until the end and past the point of really suffering, so Sometimes it's up to us to step in and help them if they are suffering and they can't do normal rat things anymore, if they can't explore the cage without falling and hurting themselves, or they can't safely be around other rats and interact with other rats, if they can't eat solid foods and eat much at all. Sometimes the kindest thing with an old rat like that is to help them and have them put to sleep. If you're struggling with knowing when to make that decision or how to monitor quality of life, I'll put a good website if I can find it in the description. It is based around dogs, but the principles are exactly the same and it kind of takes you through questions about your animal. Can they still eat their normal food? Are they having more bad days than good days? Things like that can help you to really think about your animal from an outside perspective and make that really tough decision. Some rats, as they get older, might start to have issues with eating due to other health issues, things like issues with their teeth, their mobility, or things like pituitary tumours. These can all cause issues for rats when it comes to eating their food, and they might start to lose weight quite rapidly, so you might have to step in and help them with this. So one of the first things that I will do if I notice one of my rats has started to lose weight, whether it's by weighing them or just by feeling their general condition is a bit on the thinner side, is I will do extra feedings or feed them separately because sometimes it is as simple as your rat's just getting older, obviously they're slowing down, they can't eat as fast, and the other rat's eating all of the food, so sometimes that's all it takes to help them put a bit of weight back on. So this can either be feeding them separately, so taking them out of food time, giving them a bunch of food away from the other rats, or doing extra feedings in the day, so my rats get fed in the evenings once a day, but sometimes with older rats or thinner rats, 
I will give them a lunchtime feed away from the others just to kind of boost up their weight and give them a chance to actually get some of the food. One thing to keep in mind when it comes to the diet of your rats is to lower the protein levels for older rats or rats that are starting to get old just to help support their kidney function and this is why it's so good to make your own rat food or your own rat mix because you can tweak those levels and commercial rat foods don't do this they're not really suited to younger rats that need more protein and older rats that need less so that's also one thing to think about if your older rats are struggling to eat their regular food if it's a bit too hard for them you can just soak this in water to make it into a wet food you can also feed things like baby food or weight gaining foods this one from rat rations is really good because this is just their regular mix with all the nutrients they need and should have ground up mixed with a chocolate powder that can then make a wet food and it's easier for them to eat I recommend this over using things like baby food because it's not always going to have the right nutrients they need but honestly with older rats sometimes just getting any food into them is a win. So when it comes to their cage you may have to make a few changes to their layout or the cage itself but it's really important not to baby your old rats too soon. Don't say oh because my rats are now two years old I have to put them into a smaller cage try to keep them as active for as long as possible it is really important to have an active layout and keep them active until they can't use it anymore it's good for their muscles and particularly their back legs try to keep them as active for as long as possible but of course as they do start to age their mobility is going to start to worsen and you are going to have to make a few changes to the layout just to make sure it's still safe for them add in extra fall breakers things like extra hammocks or ropes or the ikea tie holders even add in back some of the ledges and shelves that you might have taken out to make it a bit more active. You may have to add these back in just to make it safe, just in case they do slip or stop falling in the cage. Obviously there's other modifications you can make to their setup to make it accessible for them. If you have a rat that's struggling to get all the way to the top or they're low on energy, make sure they have a nice sleeping place on the ground, whether it's just a box or a low down hammock. Make sure if they are going to be sticking to the lower levels of the cage, they have everything they need on the base. Things like their food, their water, make sure their water bottles or water bowls are lowered enough for them to reach them. Just make it super accessible where they can still be in the main cage with the other rats, but everything is still on their level. Towards the end of their life, you may have to make changes in your group, possibly house them with just a calm friend away from the other rats in a smaller cage, possibly one that's not as tall, obviously still give them chances for enrichment but it's really important to maintain that social aspect even for older rats, even if they don't seem to be interacting with them as much, obviously they're not going to be running around playing but they can still provide them with warmth and they can groom them in places they can't reach so really important to maintain that social aspect even towards the end of your old rat's life. When it comes to other accommodations to make for your old rats, obviously you are going to want to start thinking about getting new rats, which is often the last thing you want to do when you're sad about your other rats getting old and sick, but it is really important to continue that group and continue that social company, so ideally you want to do this before they're two years old and before the health issues start to kick in. Obviously stress of introductions can be really harsh on pre-existing health issues like heart issues or kidney issues. You want to try to do this whilst your older rats are still in relatively good health so it's up to you to be prepared and proactive about this and choose the right time to do this and don't leave it too late. One other accommodation you might have to make when it comes to having older rats is possibly not planning vacations or holidays around the time they're going to start to get old and possibly on medication or even having to cancel vacations or trips away because you've got older rats that need round the clock care because most people are happy to just come in and check their water, put food in. Not everyone is going to be comfortable or know how to give them medication and be consistent with this. So sometimes you have to cancel everything. If you watched my vlog last month, I had to take Crimble with me three times last month because I'm the only person that knows how to do his medication. So he did have to come with me, but otherwise you might have to cancel your plans and make sure you're home with them to care for them around the clock so that is one thing to consider before even getting rats is that when they're old they can require a lot more care. But yeah 
yeah, that is pretty much all I can think of when it comes to some of the adjustments you might have to make to your rat's care as they start getting old, and of course some of the signs and symptoms to look out for when it comes to common health issues in older rats, but I hope this video has been helpful, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video.